Hello, in this video we are going to consider calculus and at the end of the video you're going to have a general understanding of what calculus is all about. But before then, let's consider this rectangle. If this rectangle has a length and also a width, then you are asked to find the area. You simply multiply the length by the width. This is very straightforward because we have the formula already. Now let's also consider a circle. And this circle has a radius of r. Then if you are asked to find the area of the circle, you simply make use of this formula pi r square, where your pi is simply equals to 22 over 7. This is quite very simple as well. Now, how about we are asked to find an area of this particular shape? Something like this. Maybe this area is being shaded and you are asked to find the area of the shaded portion. How are you going to go about it? This particular shape, there is no direct formula. So at this point, we need to make use of calculus. This is going to help us to solve a problem like this. But before then, let's consider some key concepts in calculus. So we have important concepts in calculus. And the first is we're going to consider a function. What do you know about a function? A function is simply like a machine that takes an input and produces an output. So it can be represented by a formula or an equation. If you have f of x to be equals to 3x squared plus 2, this is a function. Now, let's consider this example. If you have a function that doubles any number you put in, how will it look like? A function that doubles a number will be equals to 2x. Now, if this function takes in 3, if you have f of 3, and it's going to double it 2 times 3, and this is equals to 6. So this function doubles any number that you put in there. Now, that is not all. There's also another concept that we're going to consider. This time around, we are going to consider limit. So we have limit. What is a limit? Or how important is limit in calculus? A limit helps us to understand what happens to a function as we get really close to a specific value. As we are getting close to a specific value, then limit comes into play. It's like getting close to a destination, but and but you are not actually there at that destination. That is the idea of limit. Now we're going to take example on limit, and we're going to expand it on this. So we have example on limit. Now consider the function. Let's have this f of x is equals to two x plus one. We want to find the limit of this function as x approaches 3. We want to find the limit of this function as x approaches 3. In other words, we want to determine what happens to the function as x gets very close to 3. We want to know what will happen to this function as x gets very close to 3, but not exactly 3. So to find the limit, we're going to substitute the value of x into this particular function. Then we can actually make the value to be very close to 3, but not actually 3 in both sides. We're going to consider when x is less than 3. That means a number that is very close to 3, but not 3. And you can also consider when x is greater than 3. That means a number 
that is slightly greater than 3. Then this will help us to find the limit of this particular function. So let's start when x approaches 3 from left hand side. So you're going to have here as x approaches 3 from left hand side from left side let's use that that means at this point x should be less than 3 so what are the values we can consider x to be equals to 2.9 so at this point you're going to consider 2.9 or we insert in 2.9 here you're going to have f of 2.9 is equals to 2 into 2.9 plus 1 and this is equals to if you multiply 2 times 2.9 you're going to have 5.8 plus 1 and this is equals to 6.8 so what is the next number that you can consider you can consider when x is equals to 2.99 this also less than 3, but very close to 3 as well. So if you have f of 2.99, and this is equals to 2 into 2.99 plus 1. If you multiply this out, you're going to have 5.98 plus 1. And 5.98 plus 1 is 6.8. 9, 8. Now look at these two values. They are very close to 7, but they are not actually 7. You have 6.98 and you have, here we have 6.8 and you have 6.98. Very close to 7. Now let's also consider when x approaches 3 from the right side. A number that is greater than 3, but very close to 3. So you can consider that at this point we can write as x approaches 3 from right side or right hand side that means x is a bit greater than 3 so we can consider x to be equals to 3.1 because 3.1 is very close to 3 and a bit greater than 3 so we're going to have f of 3.1 is equals to we have 2 into 3.1 plus 1 and this is equals to 2 times 3.1 we have 6.2 plus 1 and this is equals to 7.2 now let's also consider another value this time we're going to consider when x let me have something here when x is equals to 3.01 you know 3.01 is still also greater than 3 but very close to 3 so you're going to have f of 3.01 is equals to 2 into 3.01 plus 1 if you multiply this out you're going to have 7.02 look at all this here we have 6.8 you have 6.98 here we have 7.2, here we have 7.02. From here, you agree with me that as x gets closer to 3, from the right hand side, the function gets closer to 7. So as x gets closer to 3, from 3.1 to 3.01, the function gets closer, closer to 7. And as x also gets closer to 3, from the left hand side, it gets closer to 7. So, since the function values are approaching 7 from the both hand side, we can as well say that the limit as x approaches 3 of 2x plus 1 is equal to 7. The limit of this function 2x plus 1 as x approaches 3 is equal to 7. So that is it. So we have parts of calculus and we have two of them. 
we have the differentiation and we have integration. Now let's concentrate on differentiation. In differentiation, we have what we call derivative. This derivative helps us to find the slope of a line at any given point. So that being said, if you are also riding a bicycle, the derivative tells you how quickly you are going at any given time. So let's consider an example based on differentiation. We have an example. So let's consider this problem. If you have a car driving along a straight road, the car's position at any given time is given by the equation. We have s of t equals to 2 times t. Where s represents the position and t represents the time in seconds. How fast is the car at any particular moment? If we want to know how far the car is at any particular moment, we can find the derivative of the position function. So let's make use of this space. This is the position function here. You have s of t equals to 2 times t. Now, if you find the derivative of this function here, you're going to have s prime of t. That shows that this is the derivative of this s of t. And then you need to also find the derivative of 2t. How are you going to go about it? Notice that t is to the power of 1. So, if this is raised to the power of 1, you simply multiply this power by the coefficient of the t that you have here, that is 2. So, 1 times 2, you have 2. And remember, there is t here, you have t. But there is 1 here. So, this one, you subtract another one from it. So, this is equals to, we have 2. Then, t to the power of 1 minus 1, we have t to the power of 0. And t to the power of 0 is 1. So we have 2 times 1, which is equals to 2. So the derivative of the position function is simply 2. This derivative tells us that the car is moving at a constant speed of 2 units per second. So this is it for the problem. Now let's go ahead to integration. Integration, on the other hand, it's like going in reverse. Opposite of differentiation. Imagine you know how fast you are going on your bike and you want to know how far you traveled. Integration helps us to find the total amount of distance by adding up all the little changes. All the little changes over time. So let's consider this example. Imagine you have a bucket that is being filled with water. The rate at which water is pouring into the bucket changes over time. We want to find out how much water has entered the bucket in a given period. So let's assume we have a bucket and there are some water, we have some water inside. Then we have water still pouring in, but the rate at which water is pouring in is not uniform. Then we want to find out how much water we have inside the bucket. So we can say, let the rate at which water is poured into the bucket at any given time, maybe at any given time t, be given by the function. We're going to make use of this function. R of t to be equals to 3 times t. That means the rate at which water is being poured into this bucket is given by this particular function. So we need to find how much water has entered. But before then, we need to consider for what duration. That means we can consider the time duration that we want to find how much water has entered. In this case, we're going to consider between 0 and 5 seconds. So let's find out how much water has entered into this bucket between these 0 and 5 seconds. So we're going to make use of integration. We're going to integrate this and we will find our solution. Now, because of space, let's go to the next slide. We have 
r of t is equals to 3 times t and the range of time we have between 0 and 5 seconds. So what next? So to integrate this function, we need to just simply do the reverse of what we did in differentiation. So t here, the power of t is 1. In differentiation, we subtracted 1. But in integration, we're going to add 1 and divide what we have here by the power. So we have r of t and this is with respect to the t. Now, this particular range of time, we're going to have from 0 to 5. That is the limit. Then, this is equals to, if we take the integral of this, this is to the power of 1. We're going to have 3t plus to the power of 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 is 2. So, we have 3t to the power of 2 divided by 2. So, at this point, we're going to consider the upper limit first, then we subtract it from the lower limit. You're going to insert these values. For t here, we have 3 into, we have 5 power 2 divided by 2 minus 3 into, here we have 0 power 2 divided by 2. And we have 5 power 2 is 25, 25 times 3. We have 75 divided by 2 minus, here we're going to have 0. And this is equal to 75 divided by 2. And 75 divided by 2, we have 37.5 units, since we are not given any unit. So, what, what is the meaning of this? This simply means that the total amount of water that entered the bucket during this time is 37.5 units. So, the total amount of water that entered into the bucket in the first 5 seconds is actually 37.5 unit. So, in summary, we can say that calculus is used in many areas of science and technology. For instance, engineers use it to design buildings, bridges, and aeroplanes. Even the economists also use calculus to determine how money and market changes over time. So, this is it for the video. In our next class, we're going to solve more problems involving calculus. This is just a brief intro and background study of what you need to know about calculus. Thank you and goodbye.